Hi, my name is Lauren Ridley, and this is my presentation on Yves Saint Laurent. To begin our presentation, Yves Saint Laurent was born Yves Henry Donat Matthew Saint Laurent in Oran, Algeria, August 1st, 1936, to parents Charles and Lucien Andre Matthew Saint Laurent. He had two younger siblings, Michelle and Bridget. His father was a lawyer and insurance broker, and he owned a chain of cinemas. Growing up, he was bullied for not just being homosexual, but for having the outward appearance of being a homosexual. Due to this, he had a very troubled childhood. And then his mother, who, and it wasn't really well explained, did happen to have a relationship with Michel de Brunhoff, who at the time was the editor-in-chief of French Vogue. So, in order to raise up her son and make him feel better, she took him to Paris to meet this man, who would later have a great impact on his life. Following finishing primary school in Algeria, he moved to Paris and enrolled at the Chambre Sidical de la Couture, and as I mentioned before, the man who was the editor-in-chief of French Vogue would have a great impact on his life, and he introduced him to the man himself, Christian Dior. Now, Christian Dior obviously is a very well-known man and has his own line, Dior, where he was able to get a job working directly underneath Christian Dior and became somewhat of his protege, as many would now know. In 1960, Saint Laurent was drafted to fight in the civil war in Algeria, and so he was forced to return home to Algeria to fight in the war. However, he was able to gain an exemption and then return to Paris. When he returned to Paris, however, his job with Dior was gone. And because of this, he was actually able to sue the company for a breach of contract. Now, this suit actually won him about 48,000 euros, which is now worth almost half a million dollars in U.S. dollars, of course, when you factor in inflation. In 1961, following suing Dior Company and Christian Dior for breach of contract, Yves Saint Laurent was able to launch his own brand with his then partner and lover, Pierre, using the money that he had won from his suit. The brand that he was able to launch was initially focused in women's wear, women's business wear specifically, and wanted to take a new ready to wear spin on traditional women's wear. He did, however, create men's wear, of course, and then he moved into fragrance and cosmetics, as many know now, but his main focus originally was in women's wear. Yves Saint Laurent is most known for his work with blouses, suits, and peacoats. He was the first designer to show a peacoat on a fashion runway, and he was also the first designer to put a women's suit on the runway as well, and he is the one who brought the power suit and women's suits into mainstream fashion. One of his most iconic garments is called the Mondrian. This is a cocktail dress that he created as a tribute to Piet Mondrian for his Autumn Winter 1965 Haute Couture collection. Each colored block and black band of Piet Mondrian's original artwork were seamed into the garment that is worn on the model. Another one of his most iconic, not necessarily garments or looks, but collections, is being called the Belle du Jour. This was for a movie in 1967 called Belle du Jour. He created the wardrobe for this entire movie and then specifically ended up actually dressing the star Catherine Deneuve for the rest of her career. And specifically, one of the most well-known garments from this movie is the trench coat shown here, the black trench coat that many of us know as a classic now. Next, we have one of his most iconic looks ever. This one was dubbed Lay Smoking, and it was created in 1966. It was the first tuxedo suit with curved collars and a narrow waistline created specifically for women. Now, this is the most iconic look because it was one of the first suits to be introduced and made for women. It was created so that women could show their place in 
the workplace. They were just making their way into the workplace. And so dressing like men was somewhat of a taboo, but also made as part of an expectation moving into the workplace, as well as it's been adopted by many members of the LGBTQ plus community as a symbol of gender fluidity. Another one of his most iconic garments was the safari jacket. He was one of the first designers to create a safari jacket for the runway. He created it inspired by the uniforms worn by the Africa Corps, which many people did not know that he was from Algeria, and that is where a lot of the inspiration for some of his looks came from. The final collection that I'm going to talk about has been dubbed Pop Art. It was a collection that he created specifically inspired by the collection Pop Art by Andy Warhol. It featured a lot of bright colors, very exciting and fun, and very, but also very minimal, just like Andy Warhol's art was. St. Laurent has many retailers and many options for consumers to get a hold of the merchandise. They have standalone St. Laurent stores. They have boutiques. You can buy it inside Nordstrom, Bloomingdale, Saks Fifth Avenue, many different retailers. You can also purchase it online and have it shipped to your home. There are endless possibilities and access for consumers. In 1983, Yves Saint Laurent was the first living designer to have a solo exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is a huge deal because prior to this, any other solo exhibitions of fashion were only done for designers who were in fact deceased. He was actually able to attend his own exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and this was a huge deal and a huge move for the fashion industry. He has since not been the only one to be alive for his solo exhibition, but he was the first. In 2002, he designed and hosted his final show for his brand, and then after that he retired to Marrakesh, where he then began to struggle with alcohol and addiction to cocaine and became very reclusive. A short six years after retirement from his brand, he did die in Paris, France at the age of 71. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed learning about Yves Saint Laurent as much as I did.